feels a little strange to, to be, uh, you know, in a preseason in February, um, heading into a game, but it's what it is. Um, you always say the seasons kind of like give you the feel of, of what's uh, about to happen. So obviously these games, uh, this is, um, this is when it all happened. It's for real. And we're obviously been waiting a long time for, for this first kick. Wisconsin is um, a very tough team, very well coached from John Trask. Um, last year's team will be very different from this year's team. Um, they were riddled with injuries last year when we played them. We expect maybe three starters from last year's team um, to be primary players, three or four. Um, they picked up some very good transfers. They have uh, at least four players back um, that would be main starters and, and big time players for them. So um, we got our hands cut out. Um, you know, I think their their record of last year and, and, and where they were is not indicative of where I think Wisconsin will be this year. Jeremy Price, if you want to go first, and then if you guys will just use the raise your hand feature, that'd be great. Sure. I guess uh, to your point about February, Todd, uh, you guys obviously are used to dealing with some cold weather at the end of a season, but by that point you're kind of tapering down and, you know, saving legs and stuff. Has that made it more difficult to ramp up in, uh, in such circumstances this year? It's just a rhythm change, Jeremy. I mean, it, it's, you know, it, you know, the, the, you know, where we're going to be playing the kind of the, the questions of the, of the week is, you know, where we, will we play inside, outside? There's so many like things that we just normally don't deal with in an, in what we call it our traditional season. So it makes it feel a little different. Um, you know, and some of the, my colleagues have, have said it, you know, kind of feels like a spring fall hybrid where, you know, you get the feeling of the fall because these games count and, it's they're not exhibitions, but at the same time, you, you might be playing in a venue that you play in the spring, which would be Grand Park for us. Um, so, you know, I, I think it's it's all about just how we approach it. And I know our guys will will, will be ready for the task, um, as ready as you can be without, you know, having played a game in almost a year uh, of any significance being last year a spring game around this time was our last kind of competition as a team. So, uh, yeah, it's it's different. I mean, yeah, getting – you know, three days out and we're inside Mellencamp trying to replicate uh, a, a game when you can only go 60 yards wide is not uh, not what we'd be doing in mid-August uh, out at Armstrong. Tom Brew. Hey, Coach. Good to see you. Good to see you. Uh, what's been the uh, the most difficult part uh, mentally in regards to keeping these guys engaged, you know, since you're basically starting, you know, five, six months after what you would normally do? You know, getting to this point, I mean, I think now we're, you know, when you get into a game rhythm and you can really measure yourself against another team, I think you can get a false sense when you're playing uh, inter-squad. Um, you also can get a sense where maybe some things are more effective, but you, you know what you, each other is doing. Um, so it's hard to replicate restarts. Uh, things that you know that the our second team obviously knows what we're doing, even if we tell them <laughs> to do the opposite. It's It's hard. So you just need games. You need to be able to, to measure yourself up. And, and, uh, but I think the competitiveness and, and the focus, they've done a really good job with all things considered. And, you know, I, I think there's certainly some players on our team that, that will, 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 will raise it another level with, with, uh, in, in game mode. And then some others that have been trained really well, can they do it under the pressure of, of the lights, if you will, that we don't know. We, you only find that out when you play real games. So, uh, we always say you find a lot about yourself out in the fall season, the first four games, you know, now there's very little margin. Um, we have 10 games and we got to hopefully learn quickly um, and, and, and not have mistakes, you know, ho hopefully not hurt us. Jared Kelly. Hi coach. Good to see you. Um, it, this kind of goes back to your last question, but uh, I guess without giving too much away, um, have you had a chance to kind of, figure out what your rotation is? Or is that something that's going to be kind of um, dynamic and, and changing uh, as the season goes along still? Yeah, I think our rotation is, is to be determined right now. I mean, I think we have, um, you know, a, a handful of players that, you know, have been consistently um, showing that they can help us. I think we also have a team that, based on the game and the way the game is being played, could be much more effective in, in some situations than other players, which gives us, I think, a, a strength of our team. Uh, that's hard as a player 
um, in the heat of the battle to, to not have your name called. If let's say you played well the previous segment of the previous game, but you know, I think we have guys when, that can play really well when the game's open. Others maybe a little better when the game's a little bit tighter. Um, we have a, a I'd say a, a disproportionate, um, uh, you know, swag, if you will, with some guys, the personality. So I think it depends on how the game's going. We might make personnel changes because of, of that. We have, a, we have a pretty quiet group, and yet we have some that are pretty demonstrative. So, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's going to be game to game, honestly. And I think more than ever, you know, we're, 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 we've been saying it's going to be the form, the hot hand. Um, could be the player that has the, the better half. Um, I, I don't like to have players worried and looking over their shoulder like they have a short leash, but I think this year more than ever, it, you know, th there's not going to be as much time to give a player with the depth that we have. It's hard sometimes to know in some positions who's the first and second team, and that's a good thing. Um, and, and yet at the same time, there's some clear differences on, on the skill set. Jeremy Price. I guess following up on that is, are there, are there certain guys that are, like if you're playing inside or you're playing outside, I mean, are, is there, do you feel like there's different guys that are more suited to certain pace of the game and, and things like that that you kind of have to figure out as well? There, there is. Um, I think the, the more physical the game goes, I think we're also – with the year under our belt with some of the freshmen, we, we, we also know maybe if the game is going a certain way for them, how they're able to kind of come back from it or not come back from it. So some players, you can kind of ride out a, a, a spell. If it's a junior or senior that you kind of know that they can fight through it. Some of the freshmen that played last year, we're not quite sure how they can respond to a bad spell. So it might just be the next guy up and we don't ride them. Um, like sometimes I've had in the past. Um, you know, take an example of, a, you know, a, a, some young attackers, you know, Herb Endele with, with space to get in behind and there's no one as good 1v1 in, with open field. But, you know, you, you take a Quentin Helmer who's very much a technical combining player, more of a passer than a dribbler. That might be what we need in a team that's, that's playing a little bit deeper. And maybe it's that final unlocking pass versus, you know, hard to get past two to three players with everyone's in good cover position. So again, that's an example of like where Herb or Quentin might be very uniquely different based on how the game's going. Tom Brew. Todd, uh, what's the fitness level like of these guys? I mean, obviously this is uh, uncharted territory. Is it, is, you have a pretty good gauge as to how, the, how you are with that or no? I think, we're, I think we're in a good place. They did a really good job of, you know, I thought, um, you know, Danny and, and, and Tom both kind of ha handle a lot of our sports performance. And, you know, I think they did a nice job of like, you know, getting us to where we needed to go in the fall and then kind of hitting the reset button in the month that we were away and, and giving them a great plan. I do think our base is strong. Um, there's nothing quite like the mental piece of getting through a tough game. Um, but we did play, you know, I told them the day we played 80 minutes and we played 110 and they didn't even know it. And I did that purposely to kind of let them feel what an overtime game felt like without them knowing ahead of time. And they felt pretty good. Um, but again, that, there was an anxiety of a game. You know, you put anxiety in, in, in the real game, there's going to be some fatigue that comes with that, um, mental and physical. So it, it's still hard to say. But overall, to your question, I think we're in a good place. It's harder to measure, though, still, because we haven't been able to play as large as we'd like in our normal preseason. And we'd also have two exhibition games to kind of feel out our fitness of the group. So I think we're a good place, but I think we're still a little, a little uncertain exactly where we are. Jared. Hey, Coach. Uh, in terms of your guys' back line, I know um, Callum, you guys were planning on him playing, um, but obviously that's not going to happen anymore. Uh, and, and, and you guys bring in Nick also um, as, as a backer. Uh, how confident are you in your, in your defense? Because uh, I know there's a lot of moving pieces. And um, maybe uh, do you expect to rely a lot more on, on your veterans? Or um, can we maybe expect to see a lot of younger guys to get, get some time there? Yeah, it, I, I do feel that our, our back line, um, although we lost a huge piece with, with Jack and, and Simon, I feel like we we had a 
you know, a learn by fire Roman freshman year who performed really well. And there's no reason to think he, and by his performance now is playing with more confidence, has more experience, can handle situations better, is becoming a more effective communicator. We lost a huge one with Jack there. He was one of the best leaders I've ever coached. Um, so there is a void we had to fill. And it wasn't going to be one player. It had to be, it has to be collective. And, and Daniel Muni uh, has done a really good job of improving in that area. He's a phenomenal talent. And I think his, you know, he had kind of a breakout year. And I think now you're going to really see, you know, how good of a defender this player is. Um, and then Spencer Glass, you know, I think everything's coming together at the right time for him. Um, he's an improved player from last year. And, and Nick Sesek, you know, Simon was fantastic for us. Obviously, Reek Busmack before that, but Nick is right in that mold. He is going to be an absolute lockdown defender, um, and he can get forward and execute on the on the attacking end. So, to me, he's very similar to Reese Buckmaster in, in how they play. Um, and, and Nick's final pass is very good. So I feel we might be more – we will be more balanced in our attack on, on the flanks this year, um, which I think creates a lot of problems for our opponents. So – but in the end, it's going to be, you know, we, we take tons of pride in our, in our, our team defending um, and our organization. And, you know, there – certainly when you lose two starters, it's, it's – we, we don't exactly know where we are, but I feel pretty good at this point. Last question, Tom Brew. Todd, uh, are going into a new season, are there any one or two or three specific concerns that you have that you really can't answer until you see a game or two? Well, I think you're, you know, in, until you see some of the players kind of under fire in, in, in the heat of the battle, we still have some young players that we expect to get minutes. Um, and when I say that, even some of our freshmen who played – some minutes last year, whether that be Gumbale, um, you know, Herbendale, um, to, to name a few. But I think there we, we have guys like Quentin Helmer and, and Emerson Nieto that are, that are kind of battling in for some rotation minutes. Um, we just don't know. And then you have Ian Black, who was really, really good to start of last year and then had the injury. You know, where are we going to see Ian? And I think it, it's – right now it's a little bit of temperature of the day. Um, the, each one's had the hot hand at different times in a practice, which, you know, as a coach, it can give you a little bit more gray, but at the same time, you just know who you can go to next and say, okay, it's now your turn. So it's, it's a positive, but also, you know, we're certainly looking for, for one of them to be a little bit more consistent um, and, and add an element to their game that could be a more adaptable um, based on the, 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 the opponent and what they do to try to take things away from us. Um, so we'll know a lot more once we, we get a couple games in our belt.